Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. You've probably noticed, but mid-size adventure motorcycles have really been exploding lately. Mid-size adventure bikes like this bike here make great motorcycles, even if you're not gonna go off-roading. Whether you wanna do commuting, touring, sport touring, running errands, carrying passengers, riding on any kind of surface from street to dirt surfaces, mid-size adventure motorcycles make a lot of sense. BMW was actually one of the first manufacturers to get into this mid-sized adventure bike space back in 2009 with their F800 GS. If we want to go back even further in time before the 800 GS, BMW had smaller GS models like the 650 which actually used a single cylinder engine. Some of you may remember the kind of black or sorry white and blue uh, F650 Dakar bike from the early 2000s which looked really cool. Those 650 single cylinders were eventually discontinued, ending with a Surtau model, which you may have seen a few out there at dealerships, and they were discontinued in favor of the F700 GS, which was a detuned, decontented, lower seat uh, version of BMW's F800 GS, but they, both the F700 GS and the 800 GS actually use an 800 cc parallel twin engine. With BMW's F850 GS and this F750 GS you see here, BMW has again done the exact same thing. So both of these bikes, the 850 and the 750, use an 850cc engine, and I know that can be kind of confusing. So how does the 750 GS differ from the 850 GS? Well, you get a smaller front wheel, 19 inch versus 21 inch front wheel on that 850 GS. Uh, it's lower to the ground, it has less ground clearance, and has a lower seat height. The seat on this bike is about 32 inches, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, it's decontented, it has obviously less power, less electronics, uh, it also has less suspension travel and a much different suspension system than the 850 GS. Now, although this 750 GS BMW advertised has a base price of under $10,000, the truth is most of the bikes you're gonna see, just like this one here, have something called the premium package. And with that, this bike comes in closer to that $13,000 mark. So I think the big question is, with bikes like Suzuki's ultra-reliable and proven V-Strom 650 XT coming in around $9,000, and if you look at entry site Triumph uh, Tiger, their new 850 Sport coming around $12,000, or even their 660 Sport, which is admittedly more street bias, coming in uh, under that $10,000 mark, is this bike worth the money? What are its pros and cons, and who is this bike for? So here's how we'll break down this video. We're going to take a tour around the bike. I'll show you all its specs and features. We're gonna get it out on the highway, give it a good test, do some acceleration testing. Then we're gonna get it off-road, show you how it is to ride in the dirt in case you wanna do that. Then we're gonna come back here, talk about how it compares to the competition, what I like, what I don't like about it, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So with that out of the way, let's go for a ride. All right, so first let me show you the position of riding and give you a sense of the seat height. So the seat height on this bike with the standard suspension, which this bike has, and the standard seat is 32 inches. Now there's a range, if you want lower suspension and a low seat, you can go all the way down to 30 inches. And if you get the comfort seat, which is a little bit taller than this, this would go up to 33 inches. So let me jump on board now. Just for reference, I'm 5 foot 11 and I'll put the centimeters here. I think it's 180 centimeters, but I always forget that. So, and I have a 32 inch inseam. So I can very comfortably flat foot this motorcycle. I have, I have a lot of, of room here to put my feet flat on the ground. So I would say, you know, this bike is gonna be pretty good for riders, you know, around five and a half foot, five foot six, five foot eight in that range, all the way up to six feet. Um, if you're super short, then obviously all bikes are going to be tall for you. But for a bike of this style and this kind of adventure genre, especially with the kind of long travel suspension and a 19 inch front wheel, this is very, very low to the ground. And the bike doesn't feel top heavy because, uh, again, everything's just kind of low to the ground. All right, so let's take a quick tour around the bike and talk about the specs and features that you care about. Let's start with the engine. That's really important. So it's the same engine that the 850 GS uses, and they've had this out for a few years. So it's an 853cc parallel twin engine. And in this configuration with the uh, reduced sort of fuel mapping and uh, tuning for the 750 version, which I know the naming is confusing because it's actually an 850, it makes 77 horsepower and about 63 foot-pounds of torque. 
The compression ratio on the engine is pretty high at 12.7 to 1, so it does require premium fuel or 91 octane fuel, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So wheels and tires, you have a 19 inch front wheel with cast instead of a spoked wheel, so it's more of a street uh, bike setup. And then you have a 17 inch wheel on the back, it's a 150 width rear tire and a 110 width front tire. For braking, you have 305 millimeter discs with uh, two piston calipers on each side, so they're not as strong as the brakes on BMW's uh, bigger GS's. You just get two pistons instead of four piston uh, brakes there. The suspension, it's a 41 millimeter front fork. Uh, the front fork is completely non-adjustable on the 750 GS's and you don't get the nicer inverted front fork that you do on the 850 GS, but that's what helps the spike be lower to the ground. Rear suspension, so you have the option with this bike of getting the uh, BMW's electronic suspension adjustment, which this bike has, which allows you to change preload and damping through the handlebar remote button. If you don't get the ESA, you still will get uh, adjustable preload and rebound damping, but no adjustable compression damping, and that's if you didn't opt for the ESA. Uh, we've talked about the seat height. Okay, the fuel tank is a four gallon fuel tank, uh, which is, how many liters is four gallons? 15 liters. Now the weight of the bike, if we haven't talked about it already, is 493 pounds fully fueled up. So it's fairly heavy kind of in this, you know, middleweight uh, motorcycle category. So giving you a tour around the bike, you've got a mud guard here, you've got the upper beak, you've got the LED high and low beam, LED turn signals, you've got this very small windshield which doesn't do much to deflect the wind as we're about to find out, although it's very easy to put on aftermarket windshields, just four screws and you can change that out. Uh, you've got the sides of the tank here, the fuel tank. Uh, this bike has keyless ride so the fuel tank opens uh, without having to put the key in got the side engine cases you've got the pretty large exhaust and down here is going to be your catalytic converter and then you've got the pretty large exhaust here coming out all motorcycles have these large exhausts now due to emissions requirements you've got the swing arm which kind of curves around the catalytic converter oh, and then we've got our rear brake which is a single piston caliper there and you can see the ABS sensor so ABS is going to be standard uh, pretty much on all bikes today but definitely on the 750 GS Coming around the back, you do have a small luggage rack. You have these grab handles. You have, these are mounting points for BMW's uh, hard cases that they offer, the Vario bags, LED rear light and turn signals, license plate holder. You can see the chain drive. Uh, the bike comes with a center stand, although I'm not sure that the base bike comes with that. I think that might be part of the premium package. You can see some of the hardware from BMW Dynamic ESA. So the dynamic part means that it changes to riding conditions as you're riding. So it adjusts the damping and stuff uh, for what's happening with the terrain. Uh, you can see here the shifter, the small foot pegs with the rubber inserts that you can take out. The foot pegs are very, very narrow. If you're gonna off-road much, you'd probably wanna change those out. And uh, let me go around to the other side and kind of show you underneath the engine, kind of the ground clearance. So. You don't have a whole lot of ground clearance here. I'll put the measurement here, but you know, you're gonna be a little bit limited by that. And you do have the exhaust that's pretty vulnerable under there. So if you're gonna be taking the bike off-road, one of the first things you need to do is go ahead and get a skid plate. All right, let's have a look at the dashboard and controls. If you've ridden other late model BMWs, this is gonna be very familiar to you. You've got menu buttons up and down here on the left switch gear. This allows you to go and configure your settings and also allows you to access your uh, trip computer and vehicle information. So when you pull that up, you can see you know, like your ranged empty, your battery voltage. Um, this bike looks like it has tire pressure monitors, you know, your odometer, trip consumption, all that kind of stuff there. How long you've been drinking coffee. I like how BMWs are very judgmental. They track how long you've been drinking coffee. It's got a little symbol of a coffee cup there. So we'll go out of that. Then you also have the cruise control buttons here. Electronic cruise control is very nice to have on a bike at this price point and this sort of uh, level or this category of bike. Uh, you have a button to uh, like turn off your traction control here. Then you have your suspension button, which you can uh, road or dynamic as two modes you have there uh, for your suspension to change the damping. And if you hold it down, what it's gonna do is allow you to adjust your, uh, your preload. So, you have to have the engine on to do that, by the way. You've got hazard lights, uh, horn, turn signals, uh, which work fine, and then stop start. Mode button changes your riding mode. So, you've got rain, the typical mode you're going to have a rain, road, dynamic, and enduro. And I believe that since this is a late model bike, let's see here, 
that you can change um, you can change the yeah riding mode pre-selection so okay well this bike only has these modes you don't get enduro pro I guess on the 750 um, so anyway those are the four modes that you have you have a USB plug up here you've got this tubular steel handlebar which is swept really far back if you were going to ride much off-road you'd probably want to tilt that thing forward you do have adjustable levers here you can see it's a cable operating clutch uh, a dedicated button for heated grips which I really appreciate not having go into the menu to use the heated grips so that's a nice touch uh, and this outdated nav unit, which we're not going to talk about because this is, I don't know why this is on here. They have updated units uh, beyond that. So we're not going to pay attention to that for this review. You also have a power let power socket over here to the left of the TFT. And just like all modern BMWs, the TFT is very attractive, very easy to use, very legible. So, despite being down on power compared to the 850GS, which I rode recently, this bike is still really engaging and fun to ride on the highway through the twisties like I just was. You get a nice sound from the engine and there's quite a bit of torque there. What you do notice, however, is that the engine tends to run out of steam, like around 7,000 RPM, it just sort of gives up. And I think that's the tuning that they're doing. Uh, to get that lower power figure, you know, compared to the 850 GS. So that's just something that you're getting, you know, with this lower spec model. Uh, in terms of the handling, so the handling is very, um, you know, very lively, very easy to handle. I think the skinny front tire, the 19 inch front wheel, it makes it feel pretty agile. So I enjoy the handling of it. Um, the other thing I like is that there's really no wind buffeting because the windshield is down so low like this uh, You don't have a windshield causing buffeting on your helmet So it's just a smooth flow of wind and actually I'm finding it to be quite comfortable So like I mentioned like I mentioned even though the the thing on the side says 750 you're actually riding an 850 so there's quite a bit of engine torque so if I'm lugging the engine down to like 3,000 and pulling off up uphill here there's still plenty of pull there. It has more torque than you would think. And if you compare it to something like a V-Strom 650 or a Versus 650 with those smaller engines, you definitely notice that additional displacement. Now, what else do you want to know about? Uh, we'll test the brakes here uh, in a minute. Uh, we'll do some zero to 60 runs. Uh, how is, so how does it handle like at higher speeds? So let's do that. So at 80 miles an hour, I'm slowing down here so you can hear me over the wind noise. At 80 miles an hour, uh, which is what, around 120 kilometers per hour maybe, uh, there's really no wind buffeting, which is nice, but there is really no vibration through the handlebars. The engine feels very relaxed at those higher speeds. The gearing seems pretty tall. So I would say this would be a pretty good highway touring bike if you can, you know, if you, if you don't live in a super cold, super wet climate where it's windy and, and raining all the time, uh, where you'd want more weather protection. Actually, this bike would be a really good touring bike. Uh, the ergonomics are comfortable for me. I have good leg room. I have plenty of room for my arms. The seat even feels pretty comfortable. Um, so I don't really have any complaints there. It's not going to feel cramped uh, at all, even if you're a little bit taller. So I'm 5 foot 11 and I'll put the centimeters here. But yeah, I'm very comfortable riding this. It's a bike I feel that I could ride all day. And BMW does that very well. They do the touring bike thing better than just about anybody else. Let's test the brakes here. So there's that ABS kicking in. Uh, the brakes...
yeah the brakes feel pretty decent just pull off here for a second um, they're not they're not the strongest brakes in the world you know I'm not gonna lie but they have adequate stopping power and unless you want to ride super aggressive but keep in mind this isn't you know this is not a sport bike that we're talking about um, the suspension on the road is you know it's basic it's not going to blow you away but the fact that at least this model has the dynamic esa you can change the damping i have it in a regular road damping mode i have tried it in a dynamic and it's more firm for sporty riding through the twisties the suspension is decent enough i wish there was adjustment on the front but you're just not going to get that uh, on this bike um, so yeah i'm really happy so far i i, I enjoy riding it Okay, let's do a couple acceleration runs here. And just like that, we're in the dirt. Beautiful day, kind of windy, as it always seems to be here where I live. So, if you're going to ride in the dirt a lot, BMW would tell you that you really should get their 850 GS. But a lot of people, uh, because of budget or because they want the lower seat height or they just don't need the fancier 850, are going to take this off-road. Now, like I said, you'd want to put a skid plate on if you're going to go through rocks or anything more serious than just a dirt road. We're going to ride down th through here. There's a little bit of sand. There's some dips. There's some ruts. Uh, just, you know, real world situation that you would have on a kind of fire road kind of a deal and see how the bike handles it. So you do have riding modes. You don't have all the modes that the fancier GSs have, but what you do have is uh, enduro mode. And in enduro mode, what the bike does is the traction control lets you have a little more slide. The ABS is a little bit less intrusive and the throttle response is going to be a little bit different. And the, uh, um, what else did I say? Yeah, the suspension's a little bit different too in the back because you have ESA. But it's not going to let you go crazy like the Enduro Pro mode does on the other bikes. Now, if I'm wrong about that Enduro Pro thing, I'll put that here in the text, but I, I guess you just don't get that on the 750s. So let's fire this thing up. Yeah, the traction control is a lot less intrusive in that Enduro mode. And of course you can turn the traction control off. I'm actually surprised how much rear wheel slip it's allowing me to have in that enduro mode and the abs brakes for people who say abs doesn't work off road i would beg to differ i'm in sand and i can stop pretty fast with the abs and off-road mode so you know what this motorcycle kind of reminds me the most of actually right now at least on this trail it's kind of something like a v-strom 650 i think it has kind of similar levels of suspension travel although this bike has more engine torque you can't go that fast on the trail anyway so it's not very useful but it gives you the feet here's the deal with a 750 gs off-road okay if you're just gonna do you know some dirt roads like this you're not going to do crazy you know off-road stuff and you don't feel the need to ride fast if you just want to go and explore and ride around and see the countryside a little bit then the 750 gs will give you that capability a lot more so than a pure street bike would so this is a much more of a true adventure bike than let's say the new tiger 660 is and i would compare it to something you know kind of like a v-strom uh, 650 but with more engine torque and more electronics and more fancy gadgets um, I enjoy riding this bike on a trail like this because you know if I start to push the bike a little bit I don't have to ride that fast until I'm kind of at the limits of the suspension and so I find it very engaging to ride because you know I don't have to go at rally racer speeds to feel like I'm accomplishing something now the suspension is not the smoothest thing in the world and there's quite a bit of weight here to manage so every time i hit a dip i'm kind of cringing a little bit but the bike seems to handle it you know okay can i bottom out the suspension yeah of course i mean you know if i stand up and i'm careful i can avoid it but but you could definitely 
do quite a bit of off-road riding with this bike of course better tires would help quite a bit and ultimately you know it's not the smoothest ride because you're limited kind of by that lower level of suspension travel at uh, about six and a half inches So I think with that, I think it's time to head back to the house and uh, talk about the pros and cons, the competition, and then have some final thoughts. Thanks for coming along for the ride with me. <laughs> all right, well, I hope you all enjoyed going for that ride with me. I know I certainly enjoyed going for a ride. So, at around $13,000 with normally equipped, which is how this bike is equipped with the premium package, this bike definitely faces some pretty stiff competition from other manufacturers. So what are you really getting by paying a little bit more in some cases for the BMW over some of those other bikes? Well, there's a few things that do set it apart. Uh, you're getting a three-year warranty, which is one of the best in the business. You're getting a nice low 32-inch seat height, which really helps if you're a shorter rider. You're getting BMW's really nice TFT display. You're also getting their really good electronics and the customization. And you have the optional dynamic ESA, which allows you by pressing a couple buttons to change your ride height, depending on whether you're carrying a passenger and luggage, and also change the suspension damping without ever having to get out any tools or crawl down and adjust clickers on the suspension. Now this is a hard thing to do, but I need to pick uh, what I think are sort of three competitors we can at least talk about. I can't talk about all the competitors because there's simply too many. If we want to look at this bike as a $13,000 bike, I think there's three motorcycles that I would really want to look at comparing to this. One would be a KTM 890 Adventure, the standard version, not the R, not the Rally, not anything like that. The standard version, which comes in around 13 grand. Uh, we'd look at the Tiger 850 Sport, and we'd also look at the Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT. Now, why am I not including something like Yamaha's Tenere 700? I think the Tenere 700 is much more off-road biased than this bike. Um, so I'm trying to compare this more to sort of mid-size, more street-oriented adventure bikes between that $10,000 and $13,000 mark. Let's talk about the KTM 890 Adventure first. The 890 Adventure offers the most performance for your dollar in this sort of a price category and size category. Uh, the seat is a little bit taller. It's a 33-inch seat height on the KTM 890. Uh, engine power is dramatically, dramatically more on the KTM. You're looking at around 105 horsepower uh, and more torque as well. So it's way, way faster than this bike. You also get a 21-inch front wheel, more ground clearance. It's got more off-road capability. The KTM has really, really good electronics. You can still get cruise control and quick shift and everything like that, although those things are optional extras. So you also get the low center of gravity from KTM because the fuel tank is down low compared to this bike. So that's a really stiff competitor. Now, depending about how you feel about KTM's reliability and their customer service, I'm gonna leave that up to you. A lot of you know that I haven't had a good experience with that personally, but leaving that as it is, the KTM is a really strong competitor. So let's talk about Triumph Tiger's new model, their eight, Tiger 850 Sport. So the Tiger 850 Sport matches this bike in a lot of areas you might look at. Uh, the seat height is similar, the suspension travel is similar, the ground clearance is similar. However, you get some nice kind of upgrades with that Tiger 850. Uh, and I should mention the price on the Tiger 850 is 11999 so that's very, very good. Uh, now, you can't get cruise control on that, you can't get electronic suspension, but you do have some trade-offs. On the Tiger, you get a very nice adjustable windshield, which you're obviously not getting on this bike. Uh, you're also getting more power, it has about eight more horsepower with the Tiger. So that's going to be a tough competitor. I really think you should definitely, you know, definitely test this bike, but take a hard look at the Tiger as well. Now, I know we're not really talking about the Tiger 660 Sport. I, have to, I happen to have the Tiger 660 Sport actually behind the camera right now in my garage. I'm kind of actually looking at it that way. So that test will be coming soon. If you want to compare this to that, that's a little, little bit apples and oranges. I mean, that's a smaller engine. Again, this is an 850cc engine. That 660 has a smaller engine, uh, but it's a very compelling little bike, although it's got a 17-inch front wheel and it's really not made to go off-road whatsoever. So let's put that aside for now. So let's talk about the V-Strom 650 XT. I have a full review of that bike. I did that about a year ago, I think. So I'll, I'll got that and I'll link that here and, and below. Uh, you should go check out that review. So what do you get with the V-Strom? Well, you get a Suzuki that's 
proven to be extremely durable, reliable for people all over the world for many, many years. Um, you get that Japanese reliability. Uh, the price of that bike is also quite a bit less. You know, it's coming in around that $9,300 mark. The V-Storm 650 XT, the XT version, what, one thing I like about that is you get the spoked wheels, which you don't get on this bike. So these cast wheels are more susceptible to damage from off-roading than the spoke wheels would be on that V-Storm 650. Now being a 650, uh, it, it is a little bit of an unfair comparison that way. I do admit the V-Storm 650 has less power and less torque. The most noticeable thing is the difference in torque. This bike has a lot more torque than the V-Storm 650. You would expect that since this engine is 200 cc's larger. In terms of sort of seat height, weight, the size of the bike, how they kind of feel, they're actually pretty similar. They ride uh, fairly similar. I would have to give the nod and sort of the uh, excitement or fun from the engine to that V-Storm. I really like that 90 degree V-twin engine in the V-Storm. You should really take a hard look at that bike and definitely watch my review. Final thoughts on BMW's F750 GS. I think some people have unfairly criticized this model as being too expensive for the level of performance and technology and features that you're getting. Now, I don't really agree with that because again, you have to keep in mind that this is actually an 850cc motor and for around $13,000, you're getting a three-year warranty, you're getting BMW's dynamic electronically adjustable suspension, uh, which is a very, very cool feature that no other, uh, none of the other competitors uh, to this bike really have. Uh, you know, it's very easy to ride, it's low to the ground, it does everything you need to do, it's very comfortable. And this platform for BMW, this 850cc engine, that came out with around 2018 has actually proven to be incredibly durable and we certainly can't say the same for some other manufacturers that we won't name right now. I already mentioned the three-year warranty but BMW also has some really attractive financing program. They have something called the Easy Ride program which is a balloon payment loan. Essentially you're able to get into one of these bikes for a very small amount of down payment and something like $200 a month here in the US or even below that which is very very attractive for a fully featured uh, mid-size adventure bike. So if you're somebody who wants a motorcycle for commuting, for touring, uh, for running errands, for doing some light adventure riding, exploring, just an all around motorcycle, or whether you're looking at this as more of a dedicated adventure platform, you should not overlook this bike. You should definitely go take a test ride on one. It offers a combination of really high tech features, a pretty premium feel and quality. It's easy to ride. The engine has a lot of torque. Everything works really well. It's comfortable. So definitely don't overlook this bike. Definitely go take one for a test ride. As always, check out all the competition because in this category, there's so many uh, great competitors coming out every year. And this is one of the most exciting categories in motorcycling right now. I think I'm gonna leave this video uh, at that. Thank you so much for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto and there's ways to do that in the description below. Uh, besides that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.